Okay, good afternoon. I'm Keisha Powell, I'm the Commissioner for Department of Watershed Management. I just wanted to first thank you for coming um, and uh, getting an update on what occurred with uh, our Hemp Hill High Service Pump Station yesterday. Shortly after 10 yesterday, our uh, team was doing some routine maintenance actually on some flow meters that um, are on the headers that go to the distribution system. And as a result of the work they were performing, uh, it sent an alarm to our SCADA system to shut the pumps down. And this is actually a feature in place that actually protects the equipment because it sensed high pressure on the line. So in order to keep um, the equipment from being damaged, the pumps from being damaged, or the line um, uh, exploding from the uh, pressure, it actually sends an alarm to the system. So our team has been working since yesterday to do this root cause analysis and to determine how we can prevent this from happening again. Um, but I do want to stress that it was not a result of a power outage. We actually have two layers of redundancy here at the Hemp Hill facility. We have dual feeds from Georgia Power, so two separate substations. And we've also got a bank of generators as a third measure for power redundancy. Uh, so we'll assess uh, the, the issue and we are engaging our engineers to, to do a little bit more assessment so that we understand how to keep this uh, from happening again. Um, but, you know, we, from this facility, we, we were able to get the water restored in the system in less than an hour. I think someone said 55 minutes. Uh, so we've been pushing good water since that time. And uh, we knew or believed that we would not have a contamination issue, but out of an abundance of caution, we issued a boil water advisory as we're required to do to just acknowledge the issue and to make sure that folks understand that we have to do some sampling to um, make sure that, the, that we're protecting the public's health. So today about uh, 12.30 or so, uh, maybe a little bit earlier, we, our lab uh, got the final, started getting results in. Uh, we got the final results um, and once we received the final results, we had a consultation internally. We also made sure that EPD, Georgia EPD, was advised and acknowledged receiving the results. And then we lifted the advisory much earlier than um, we had suggested yesterday. Uh, we knew that was a possibility, but we wanted to establish reasonable expectations on yesterday since we were getting sampling late into the to, to the evening. And um, we were fortunately able to lift the advisory uh, this afternoon. And um, as we thought, the, the sample results came back as clear samples, all negative for total coliform, so no contamination as a result of this event. And I also want to stress that the Hemp Hill facility is reliable. Um, we, there are some cities that are experiencing bore water advisories um, multiple times a week. And uh, again, that's a, an advisory that is a, a, a put in place to make sure that we have an opportunity to, to test the water and make sure that we are providing safe drinking water to the customers that we serve. Um, but we do have a reliable operation here. but. More than the facility being reliable, we have a great team in place. And the team that assessed this issue very quickly, identified the issue, assessed it, and were able to get the pumps back online to get the water restored and pressures restored in the system, um, worked uh, very hard yesterday and are a phenomenal team. Um, and so I'm, I'm very proud of the work that they were able to do to get this resolved very quickly. Still having said how quickly you were able to resolve this, it, it was a big disruption for mm -hmm. people in the city of Atlanta, people who live here, people who work here, people who visit here. What can you say to those people uh, recognizing that disruption that you were able to resolve, but still it, it caused a lot of uh, problems for businesses who had to close mm -hmm. and that kind of thing? And we, that does not go missed by us. We certainly understand the inconvenience and the disruption, uh, but 
what is paramount to us is protecting the public's safety, health and safety. And so that has to come first. And we recognize the disruption. We have projects underway uh, to upgrade, uh, make upgrades at Hemp Hill that are already part of our capital improvement plan. So we'll continue those projects. We also have a project uh, that is underway to, to put a, a storage tank and pump station to cover the downtown area so that if we have issues, um, it will not impact the distribution system and we'll be able to maintain pressure. So because the pressures dropped below 20 PSI, 20 pounds per square inch yesterday, um, until we could get those, uh, get the results of the sampling in, we had to issue the advisory. Uh, Commissioner, since it dropped to the, the, the system, said get that override or whatever, and then shut down the pumps, what are we doing to make sure that that doesn't happen again? Well, again, we're assessing, and in, in this case, you know, we believe we have the resolve, and that's to make sure that the uh, the flow meters themselves, both of them, are in, ma in maintenance mode. Uh, there are some pressure sensors there that we need to make sure are in maintenance mode as well. Um, we've not experienced this particular alarm before. The team had not. And so we're going to do some additional assessment of the control system and make sure that we have measures in place that um, allow us a bit more control over the control system that we have in place for the pumps. So, Commissioner, the control system or or the maintenance mode, it, it's all kind of done by computers or right. automated? The, so it was a malfunction, if you will, with the computer? System? No, the skate it's the SCADA system and it wasn't a malfunction. Yeah. It, it it performed as it, it was designed to protect the equipment. When the system sees high pressure yeah. uh, as the water is trying to get out of the plant as a protection feature, it shut the pl the pumps down. So the maintenance workers were they doing something that caused more pressure to go through the hose? What the work that they were doing caused the the sensors to to they were basically um, reading a differential, if you will, between two sensors that we have in place without getting into the details of the design of the system because I don't want to expose too much there for, no. for um, obvious reasons. But um, that is the, the control, the computer system was seeing something um, that was not in actuality. And so we have to understand how we can keep that from happening again but it's not um, it wasn't necessarily a malfunction right yeah misuse of words right. when will you know when will you have that corrected the way you want it well for now we know what we need to do to avoid that particular issue happening again but we're engaging our engineers to do a further assessment of the control system itself mm -hmm all of the alarms that are and all of the set points so that we are sure we know what will happen if we take certain actions in maintaining the equipment for for the system one of the things uh commissioner i think when when something like this i, I don't think this is for me at least this is the first time i think i've ever seen a wide a citywide boil water advisory here in the city of mm -hmm. atlanta Give us an idea of how you felt about the um, the distribution of information to restaurants and, and things like that. Because it, it seems like we were getting some uh, feedback that uh, some restaurants didn't know they had to, you know, they couldn't use the ice cubes or they had to boil the water or they couldn't use the water so they were still serving, mm -hmm. uh, you know, water at restaurants uh, late into the evening last night. Uh, is there a way to better communicate that with the public? Right. We're always working to improve our communications and making sure that if there are folks that were not, um, that did not receive the information either timely or at all, that we're shoring up our communications in that way. Uh, we were working with our city's uh, internal, the mayor's office of communications, our internal emergency management team, uh, both our watershed emergency management team and the mayor's office of emergency management, as well as um, AFSEMA and other uh, emergency management partners. Um, we had a number of critical stakeholders engaged in the discussions as well as Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport 
and those folks that have the the communications outlets and channels to push our messages to other um, all parts of the city. Uh, we did robocalls, we did social media posts, we did press releases, um, all manner of communication uh, through Notify ATL, um, various means, our newsletters. So we're always, wherever we can improve, we will. Um, and we'll, f we'll find out um, where any deficiencies were and make sure that we shore those up for the next incident. I was happy to hear that um, you know folks did get the messages, some, many folks got the messages timely through the robocalls and all of the, the things that were posted. Um, in this instance, because the issue started to have some impacts, um, of loss of water and loss of pressure, and we were trying to get the, the pumps back online, we started pushing the messages more broad uh, to start so that we could get the message out because we didn't want to wait to narrow down the impact. There is a process that we have to go through to really model what happened so that we can tighten up the boil water advisory, which we did. And so um, in that process, we wanted to make sure that we got the, the notification out as quickly as possible and then tighten up versus starting with a very tight scope and then having to broaden and folks not having been notified at all. So, About how often um, are major boil water advisories issued like this in Atlanta and what's the cost to um, the city and taxpayers? Uh, this is the second since I've been here. Um, I, we have not issued them often. Um, I have seen instances where uh, boil water advisories are issued much more frequently in other places, um, even in Georgia. So um, that's not to uh, you know discount the work of any other utility because these you know it it does happen. And again, it is while it's an inconvenience, it is a measure that's in place to make sure that folks are aware that we need to sample and make sure that there's no contamination. Not that we have, be, believe that the water is contaminated. And so we're not saying do not use the water. We're saying that we need to boil water before in any uses that would ingest the water. Um, so that's the, the difference. And I, I do recognize that it's an impact. We estimated that a loss of water for one day in the city of Atlanta would be an economic impact of $250 million. And by the end of the end of a week uh, without water, it would be $1.2 billion. So we know that there's, there's impacts. Um, and that is the inconvenience of, of, of infrastructure issues sometimes. Um, our goal is to always get services restored as quickly as possible. Um, you know, we serve 1.2 million customers each and every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And 55 minutes without water is an inconvenience, but compared to our record, I think we're doing very well from this facility. Ma'am, with all due respect, there was a lot of confusion yesterday. Your website crashed when a lot of residents mm -hmm. were trying to get information. It's great to hear from you now, but we haven't heard from you in 24 hours. We weren't able to talk to you yesterday. Can you truly say that you were as transparent as you could be during the crisis? We were transparent, and we've got communications folks. We have um, folks from Mayor's Office of Communications that are handling communications. When we are dealing with an issue and trying to get services restored, I am focusing on the issue and trying to make sure that we're getting the issue resolved and making sure that we're getting communications out.